Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ariel Wright. I'm a current senior studying computer science at Harvard University and a former quant in cryptocurrency at Goldman Sachs. And today I want to talk to you a bit about trading. Earlier this month, within days, Donald Trump tweeted about the negotiations with the trade war in China falling through. As a result, one man with one tweet single-handedly moved the S&P 500 down by 4% in just two days. That is an equivalent of $90 billion lost across our nation. <clears throat> However, firms like JP Morgan were not as impacted. Why? Because they have an index tracking Trump's tweets. But this isn't the only instance or case of this. Take, for instance, the Boeing plane crash, which occurred earlier this year. Dropping by 5%, this is approximately $10 billion in losses in our nation in just 24 hours. This can easily be prevented with simple algorithms. <clears throat> However, only 7% of our world can code. But 85% of our market is led by machines. Where does that leave everybody else? From the everyday trader on Robinhood, TD Ameritrade, to the average manager or analyst at a hedge fund who has just started a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Everyone in this space is being left behind, which is why we created Stratiax. StratiX is democratizing algorithmic trading. We do this by providing easy-to-use quantitative tools for everyday non-coding investors. <clears throat> the process essentially is broken down into three phases. Creating a strategy, backtesting your strategy, and then automation. Move to demo. I can show you a little bit about it. Can we move to demo, please? Thank you. So StratiX is actually brokerage agnostic, meaning you can bring your own broker. Today we'll be just be using our stock simulator since we used Robinhood yesterday. Let's create a strategy. Today we'll be using Vivint. We decided to keep going with the sort of solar panel materials that we had yesterday. And we'll go for 10 shares. Notice here, the way that StratiX's interface centers around the idea of making it as easy to use as possible and relatable in plain English language. You can create bespoke rules within several categories to buy when and sell when for any type of strategy in stock. For instance, you can do things in Forex, Twitter, news, and combine them into bespoke materials that they can extrapolate from. Today, we decided that we wanted to buy with indicators mentioning positive things related to the democratic election, uh, climate change, as well as clean energy ends up being mentioned in the news. And we decided that we wanted to sell when the news essentially mentions things related to geopolitical instability. So maybe Trump, trade war, and economy is going down. Awesome. So from here, we then can backtest to be able to see our results. And unlike any other sort of tool in the space, StratiX allows users to backtest before they go forth with a strategy. And this backtesting is built essentially in-house and, and grounded in our proprietary scripting language that allows you to not only build materials off of dynamic things such as true and false, but also off of pure materials in our real world. Our language is Turing complete, essentially meaning that you can adopt and create expressions for almost anything. Awesome, so essentially our returns seem they were, can I have a look? Oh, 10, oh, that's pretty good, wow, okay. <laughs> and what was the price of the stock? Oh, only up 5%. So essentially strat the strategy not only was able to provide solid returns, 
but in many cases, it obviously can be just holding a, stock, a simple stock. We also have protection mechanisms for more so younger users to allow us to extrapolate further. Great, let's move back to slides. <clears throat> Our plans essentially start from free all the way to day trader with other materials and tailored packages for larger accounts. Our market sits at about 52 billion for the everyday 100 million investors. And from there, it expands globally to approximately 500 million investors. One thing that's great about StratiX is that it's not only easy to use, but offers full autonomy, historical testing, and is brokerage agnostic, and is essentially the only one in our space. A bit of information about us. We've garnered 10,000 people on our wait list with zero marketing spend and have a beta net promoter score of 7.5. Our team is made up of accomplished Harvard researchers, computer scientists, and have worked on accounts as large as $200 million. StratiX is here to democratize algorithmic trading. We invite all of the investors and traders of the world to come on our platform to reclaim your alpha. Thank you. Okay, judges. Uh, when, uh, the news sources, how do you decide what news sources count as news and what doesn't count as news? And how does the, can the user actually see which news sources are being utilized? Yeah, of course. So I can break this down into two parts. So number one, before we uh, con considered even creating this sort of bespoke mechanism surrounding news, we decided to take the most interesting and well-vetted news sources, such as your CNN, um, your CNBC, your Wall Street Journal, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We created and curated the list, and then from there decided to include those within our sources. Do you weight any source at yeah. the greater? Yes. We give um, each news source a quality score, and it's a zero through 10 score, and it's based on, one, their impact, and two, the actual quality of their posts. So if the articles are like legit, or if they're like fake news sometimes, or if they're state run, it usually brings their score further down. And then we also allow you to categorize it. So if it's left wing media, TV news, cable news, uh, much more uh, granular news sources, if you would like. I like that you're attacking a big market and that you're taking things that the institutions have had for a long time and democratizing them. I think that one of the things that strikes me is sentiment analysis is notoriously difficult. Uh, so you can tell, for example, that a trade war is being talked about or that a particular company is being talked about, but you can't tell if it's positive or negative. Uh, so for example, what have you done on sentiment analysis? And in particular, on um, the Trump example you threw out in the beginning, how would a person go about capturing that that's actually negative sentiment? Because he's also made tweets that have moved the market positively. I can take this one. So essentially, we thought really long and hard about this concept as well. And we decided that we think that historical sentiment analysis is essentially terrible. Um, and so we decided to come up with our own solution that centers around being able to use our, our economy of scale, or essentially our users, to be able to actually get accurate, forward-looking sentiment analysis, as historical is terrible, as I noted earlier. Um, so with that, the way that sort of looks is being able to literally let users give their sentiment analysis on different articles and tweets. This is essentially something that's in alpha and users can check out, especially on the application. And the more that users contribute to this, this sort of model that we have, it's a federated learning model, um, not only does the better the model get to provide for the community, obviously the, the better the, the results get the, for the whole space. But you're gonna learn a model, you're not gonna wait, for example, for a feedback loop, because I'm assuming that won't be fast enough. By feedback loop, do you mean? I mean, if you're waiting for the users to actually categorize whether this article is going to move things positively so, or negatively, it's going to be really slow so if to you, respond um, in the trades. If we have manually approving uh, your strategy, right? So if you would like to, um, if you click the link, then it's a, a good link for you, right? We can use that info as well. And if you have to click the link to buy the stock then. For instance, yeah. I mentioned earlier about how before users can actually make a trade that's automated, they can instead choose to review it uh, or have a manual trigger, if you will. We also use the data from that to be able to extrapolate for our models, essentially. Why now? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> um, essentially, with the sort of wave and push of not only the, the Robin Hood, like they literally pushed $2 billion in trades per year. Schwab made trading free, TD Ameritrade made trading free, but people normally lose at about negative 7.4%.
So what is that saying? And 85% of the market is made by bots, and they normally perform better. Being able to put tools that allow people to not only test and sort of automate into their hands should essentially help this large wave of people that have been sort of searching for a solution, as noted by like our wait list and other groups of, groups of people that have been approaching us, with, um, will essentially allow a more forward-looking future for better trading in general, right? So, so I agree with you, there are some trends in your favor, but aren't you fighting a bunch of trends against your favor? So active management has been going down, the hedge fund industry has been shrinking, most people are putting money in ETFs and indexing versus actively trading. So I don't think that that data is accurate anymore considering number one, bonds are worthless now. <laughs> Um, so being able to actually trust and put your materials and money in what many would consider a passive account is becoming a less of a norm, especially for people around our age group, where about 74% of them use like forward fintech solutions instead. Particularly, we've actually even had private wealth managers approach us because they only do passive and they want to be able to provide a fintech solution for their active clients to be able to extrapolate further. Also, if um, the market's volatile, which is a lot of what people are concerned of, um, it's actually good for us because there's more movement, more uh, potential gains. And how do you plan on acquiring customers? So we have a few different pathways. Currently, we have sort of a community that follows us in places like Reddit and Discord. Um, they've sort of guarded and championed us to be able to even get to where we are today. We also have different groups and communities within college campuses, as well as like large uh, pools and groups of people that were kind of wave of Robin Hoods if you will, and they pushed us for the after, the sort of Robin Hood after tool. Um, so being able to sort of harbor and push that community further by continuing to grow it, referrals, using the sort of similar growth model as, as Robin Hood and partnering with our brokers to be able to expand it further, essentially is what we're looking for. In terms of the B2B side, they've been coming to us a lot. So we actually don't even have enough resources currently to even take on all of them. So we're having to be picky about even giving and taking on clients. And from there, we think that probably a mixture of referrals, as well as spending time uh, perfecting product market fit for those clients will be enough. What risk do you expose yourself to uh, if you fail to execute on a strategy, maybe at the wrong time or at the wrong price? Are there any risk if you're automatically trading on behalf of your, your customers? So currently in the eyes of the SEC, we're considered to be what many would consider like an Excel or like a software, if you will. Mm -hmm. You can extrapolate and throw an API into Bloomberg and literally call it the same thing if you could code, but you do not So you use us instead, right? That is exactly where we sort of sit. Your broker is still the main one in charge. You are also still the main one in charge and you're extrapolating and, and pushing forward automated rules. But in the eyes of the SEC, these rules are considered to be your responsibility. But isn't there ambiguity? It's I, 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 would, I have like I had an IFTT set up for like my oh, smart home, and when I every time I opened my garage door, my bathroom light would come on, right? Because I just did it wrong. Um, aren't, aren't there liabilities in the ambiguity of the of the news? Like if you if you as an entity read that news without the nuance of the bias of the article, and then it triggers a trade you suddenly now are liable because your technology misread that headline. So isn't there liability in that? If, so, um, if yeah, you use Microsoft forward. Excel, you can actually use Microsoft Excel to make trades for you as well. And if you had data coming from another source feeding into your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet um, and it made a trade you didn't agree with, would you sue Microsoft? But it doesn't interpret the data though. That's it, right, it, you're interpreting. Essentially, essentially, no, it uses a formal word to vec where it literally picks out the ones that you, that you literally noted. And then from there, it does a, a mixture of key string or keyword matching. And then from there, it extrapolates, which is, is, it, is how it we then, sit in Are you grade. doing sentiment analysis or not then? No. Currently, no. Yeah. Currently, no. So it's just keywords. Right. It's not mm -hmm. for now. We're doing core features in the app right now. And then the rest of it we plan to have with extensions. And then also formally with partnering with PWMs, which will allow us to formally have adv advisor and broker dealer materials. This will also allow us to offer further materials uh, in, within the ML space. All right, one more round of applause for StratiX.